Hello and welcome. Today, we explore a question that strikes at the heart of identity. Are Ethiopians truly 100% African? In this video, we'll journey through ancient fossils, DNA, migrations, and human history to understand what it truly means to be African. By the end, you'll see why the answer isn't so simple, but deeply meaningful. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the story of Ethiopia and its place in the African journey. Now let's get started. But first, let's go back to where it all began. Ethiopia stands as one of the most important regions in the story of human origins. In the Afar Rift Valley, archaeologists have made discoveries that changed everything we knew about early life on Earth. One of the most famous fossils ever found, Lucy, was unearthed here. She lived about 3.2 million years ago and belonged to a species called Australopithecus afarensis. Lucy walked upright, showing that humans began evolving long before we thought. Another powerful discovery followed in 2000, when the fossil of a three-year-old child was found in Dakika, known as Salam, or Lucy's baby. This skeleton was even older, dated to about 3.3 million years ago. These discoveries are more than bones. They are clues that show Ethiopia as a place where humankind first took shape. For this reason, many scientists call Ethiopia the cradle of humanity. But bones alone can't tell the whole story. Modern science has allowed us to look deeper than fossils, into DNA itself. In 2015, researchers studied the remains of a man buried 4,500 years ago in the Ethiopian highlands. They called him Moto. His DNA was purely African, with no trace of non-African ancestry. But when they compared it with modern Ethiopians, they noticed something different. Many groups today, especially the Amhara and Tigray, carry between 25 to 50% of their DNA from ancient West Eurasian sources. These genetic traces suggest that somewhere in history, people from outside Africa mixed with Ethiopian populations. But even with this mixture, the core of Ethiopian DNA remains deeply rooted in Africa. But how did these outside genes enter Ethiopia in the first place? Thousands of years ago, something remarkable happened. Around 3,000 years ago, people from the Near East, possibly farmers and traders, migrated into the Horn of Africa. These people brought not only crops and tools, but also their languages, culture, and genes. At the same time, the ancient DMT kingdom began to rise in what is now northern Ethiopia. This kingdom, along with the arrival of new languages known as Ethio-Semitic, marked a turning point. The people who came from across the Red Sea didn't simply visit. They stayed, married into local communities, and became part of the land. Their genetic influence blended most strongly with highland groups who spoke Cushitic and Semitic languages. Today, populations like the Amhara, Tigray, Aramo, and Gurage still carry the fingerprints of that ancient contact. It was a meeting of worlds that helped shape modern Ethiopia, but it did not take away its African foundation. It only added to its long and rich story. To understand this mixing more clearly, we need to look at how ancestry is passed down through generations. When scientists study ancestry, they often look at two special types of DNA. One is mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, which is passed down from mothers. The other is the Y chromosome, passed from fathers to sons. In Ethiopia, these two types of DNA tell an interesting story. About half of the maternal lineages in Ethiopia belong to African-specific haplogroups, which means they have deep African roots. The other half show Eurasian influence, but not as strongly. However, when scientists look at the Y chromosome, they find something different. Most of the Eurasian ancestry is found in the male line. This suggests that thousands of years ago, it was mostly Eurasian men who migrated into the region. They mixed with local African women, and over time, their descendants became part of Ethiopian society. This male-driven gene flow explains why the Y chromosome shows more non-African influence than the maternal line. It also reminds us that migration was often shaped by gender roles and historical circumstances. Even though Eurasian ancestry is present, the heart of Ethiopia's people remains rooted in African heritage. But Ethiopia's story doesn't stop with ancient migrations, its diversity goes even deeper. Ethiopia is not one people, it is many. With more than 68 ethnic groups and several language families, the country is one of the most diverse in all of Africa. 
Languages spoken include Cushitic, Semitic, Omotic, and Nilotic, and people live across highlands, valleys, and desert plains. Because of this, Ethiopian DNA is not one uniform pattern. It changes from group to group. Highland communities like the Amhara, Tigray, Gorage, and Silt often have more Eurasian ancestry. This is sometimes reflected in their physical features, such as lighter skin or narrower facial structures. These traits likely came from ancient contact with Eurasian migrants. On the other hand, lowland groups like the Afar, Somali, Omotic, and Nilotic peoples tend to show mostly sub-Saharan African features. Their ancestry reflects deeper African roots, with less outside influence. The environment, history, and movement of people over centuries all played a role in shaping these differences. Ethiopia's strength lies in this rich mixture of cultures and ancestries. Every group adds something special to the identity of the nation. This brings us to the heart of the question. When we ask if Ethiopians are 100% African, we must first ask, what do we mean by African? If we are talking about geography, then the answer is clear. Ethiopia is in Africa, and its people have lived on this land for thousands of years. If we speak of history and culture, the answer is still yes. Ethiopia has shaped African religion, politics, and tradition for generations. But if we are speaking strictly about genetics, the answer becomes more complicated. Because of ancient mixing with people from the Near East, many Ethiopians today carry some West Eurasian DNA. Studies show that highland groups can have up to 40% of their ancestry from outside Africa. Yet, this does not erase their African identity. In fact, ancient people like Moda, who lived 4,500 years ago, had purely sub-Saharan African DNA. That tells us that before any mixing happened, the people of Ethiopia were fully African in every way. So while some genes may have come from elsewhere, the soul of Ethiopia remains African. Identity is not just about blood, it is about language, land, memory, and belonging. And by those deeper measures, Ethiopians are absolutely and undeniably African. So, after everything we've explored today, what do we truly see? Ethiopia is, without question, a deeply African nation. It is the land where some of the earliest humans walked. From the ancient bones of Lucy and Selam to the breathtaking highlands and ancient rock-hewn churches, every part of Ethiopia tells a story that is deeply rooted in Africa. This is the cradle of humankind, a land where history runs deeper than memory and where African identity was born long before borders or nations existed. The languages spoken, the spiritual traditions, the kingdoms that rose and fell, all of it speaks to a rich, uninterrupted African legacy. But the story doesn't end there. DNA opens another chapter, one that adds depth, not contradiction. The genetic evidence reveals that many Ethiopians, especially those in the highlands, carry a noticeable amount of ancient Eurasian ancestry, up to 40% in some groups. This isn't recent, it happened thousands of years ago, likely during the time of the DMT Kingdom and the early Ethiosemitic period. Migrants from the Near East arrived with new customs, crops, and genes, blending with the people already there. Over time, their descendants became fully Ethiopian. So what does this mean? It means Ethiopia is both ancient and dynamic, firmly African, yet uniquely shaped by encounters with the wider world. It shows that being African is not about being pure. It's about origin, belonging, and identity. And Ethiopia, with all its complexity, remains one of the strongest and oldest heartbeats of the African continent. So, are Ethiopians 100% African? That depends on how you define African. If you mean geography, culture, origin, and history, then yes, they are fully African. But if you mean genetic purity, the answer is more complex. Now here's a question for you. Do you believe being African is defined more by blood, by culture, or by origin? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear your perspective. If you found this video eye-opening, please don't forget to subscribe for more deep and respectful explorations of African identity and history. Like this video to help more people discover this topic. Share it with friends and family who care about African roots and truth. And of course, comment below with your own experience or opinion. Your voice matters here. Thanks for being part of this journey through history, identity, and truth. Until next time, Stay curious, stay rooted.